Praise the Lord. God's mercies are new every morning. Uh, this afternoon, I want to encourage uh, each one of us from the book of uh, Lamentation. From the book of uh, Lamentation. Now, this Lamentation is a small book, only five uh, chapters, but it contains, you no, know, it has so many uh, lessons for us to learn, and then from, I mean, for us to see, you no. Know, from here, this book was written by the prophet Jeremiah, and most probably he wrote this uh, lamentation maybe right after the destruction of the city of Jerusalem, because he himself says that he was the eyewitness of those destruction. And so in chapter 1 and chapter 2, he was describing about the, the community, you know, the Israelites that suffer under the hands of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And it's not because that God wants to punish them, but it's because of their disobedience. Hundred years you know, before the destruction of Jerusalem, God sent prophets after prophets to warn them. But they did not uh, no, listen. They just gave a deaf ear to those prophets. And they thought that nothing will happen. But God is a God who keeps his promise. And therefore God sent, use uh, the, the Babylonians to punish Israelites, especially Judah. And so here we see that how the destruction took place, and then how the city was ransacked, how people were killed, how the, the strong, the wealthy, and then the officials were taken uh, to Babylon as a slave. And how, you no. Know, a mother kill his baby, cook and eat because there was no food. See, the city was sieged by Babylonians. They cannot go out. They cannot come in. Nobody comes in. Nobody's go, nobody goes out. And so there was no food. And so the mother has to kill their children and cook and eat their own offsprings. Cannibalism. They became the, the mothers, you know, became cannibals. And, but in chapter 3, you know, Jeremiah was describing about himself, how he suffered, how he went through you know, all the sufferings, all the persecution, the hunger, the thirst, you know, the cold that he went through. And so he described about the community, and then now he described about himself, the sufferings that he went through. I don't know how many of us are going through you know, different problems, different sufferings, different you know, situations. Because in chapter 3 verse 1 he said, I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. Jeremiah was a prophet sent by God, but he suffered. You know, he suffered as if you know, there is no God. He suffered as if he disobeyed uh, God's commandment. And so he said, I have seen affliction. I have seen my people dying. I have seen the mother, uh, those uh, you know, mothers you know, killing their children and eating. I have seen the Babylonian soldiers you know, killing my own people you know, in front of my eyes. I have seen how those, my brothers and sisters were taken to captivity. I have seen all those affliction. 
And then he said that the, he has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. Sometimes we go through you know, a difficult situation where you know, we, we started to think that God is nowhere, you know, nowhere to be seen. But always remember, you no, know, there was a there was a wild inscription in this uh, 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 concentration camp where a Jewish wrote you know, on the wall saying that says that um, I believe that there is sun even if I don't see the sun. I believe that there is a love even if I don't feel it. I believe that there is God. Even when he is silent. For Jeremiah, no God was silent. Maybe for you. You may think, I may think that God is silent. You may, you may think, I may think, why? Why am I suffering? Why am I going through this situation? These days, you know, I called up my father last week. And then... Um, uh, uh, he told me that uh, my mother was you no know, spell black magic by you no know, witchcraft to destroy her, and so my mother suffered, you no, know, and then uh, that affect uh, the kidney, and so she suffers a lot, and that is none other than by you no know, my my father's uh, brother's wife, you see. A man's own enemies are the men of his own household. That is what uh, the Bible says. And so they were against uh, my, my parents. And so his wife you know, did a black magic and spilled it on the fruit, I mean on the vegetable that uh, my mother was uh, uh, cultivating in the garden. And so she suffered, so she, you know, she went to uh, a lady, you know, a prayerful lady whom God used mightily. And before my mother described anything, she told her that, no, somebody used a black magic to kill you. And so she prayed and then she removed you know, that black magic. And now my mother is very healthy. Yeah. Now she, yeah, last night I called her and she said now she's, she don't feel any pain. But before, no, and so she told him that your kidney, no, is also, no, infected. And so our village is full of uh, those uh, black magic, no, the, the spell on others when they don't like, no. If somebody is against them, they will just uh, spell, no. Maybe they will take uh, your hair. And then two, maybe they will cut the, the hem of your cloth, or they will uh, give you some drinks or food, put there, and then so that you will, uh, you will die. And you will not, they will, you will, you will not uh, fear, I mean, uh, uh, there is no, like, uh, it seems like uh, there is no proper sickness. Seems like you feel pain no, everywhere. Not exactly, not exactly headache. Not exactly body act, no, but all the pain is mixed, and that's how you, know, you become weak, you no, know, day by day, and then you just die. Now why? Right? Why? Is there no God? That is what Jeremiah was uh, feeling. He said, God has turned his face you know, from me. Seems like God is hiding. Seems like God does not have any interest in the life and ministry of uh, Jeremiah. Because he suffered a lot. He was persecuted by his own uh, family members. His life was you know, after you know, the, the king and the royal, you no. Know, they were after Jeremiah's life to kill him, to destroy him. And so he, he went on to say that uh, he has made my flesh and my skin 
west away. He has broken my bones. He has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. You know, his life was filled with bitterness. They put him into the dungeon. They chained his uh, uh, hands and legs. The king ordered not to give bread to Jeremiah. All those sufferings that he went through. And he started to, to express his, uh, his bitterness, his anger, thinking that, no, there is no God. But remember, but remember as we read down, we see that there is hope. There is hope. Jeremiah said that, I thought God disappeared. I thought that God hide his face from me. But he says in verse 21 and 22 onwards, he says that no, God's mercies, God's faithfulness are new every morning. See? And so in verse, after no, expressing all the sufferings and uh, trials and problems that he went through, he says that, I thought, see, it's because of God's mercy. Otherwise, Otherwise, the, the problem might be worse. See, the persecution might be worse. But it's because of God's mercy. No, I was spared. My life was spared. It's because of God's mercy that new life was given to my mother. New strength was given to her. And so, in verse 22, he said that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Now here, the Hebrew word for love is hesed, which means a covenant or a royal love, no, royal mercies. The covenant that God made with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, and with the children of Israelites. And then the covenant that he made with you and with me. And so he says that the love of the Lord never ceases. And then he said his mercies never come to an end. His compassion. Now the Hebrew word compassion is related to the womb where you know, a mother carries the baby. And when a woman is pregnant, you no, know, she was so careful, right? The, while walking also she, she cared for the baby inside her womb. Even for eating also she don't eat uh, no, anything. She, she chose the right food to eat. See? The mother takes care of the baby you know, which is inside her womb. That's how God cares for you and for me. That's how God no, care. That's how God protect. That's how God secure your life and my life in the midst of suffering, in the midst of trials, in the midst of persecution. And then they said, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God's faithfulness are new every morning. Today's faithfulness for today's, tomorrow's uh, uh, faithfulness for tomorrow. You see, it's like the manna in the wilderness. Israelites were not, uh, were told not to, to, to uh, take the, the manna, no, extra manna for tomorrow. Because tomorrow God is going to provide new manna when the morning comes. And that's why Jeremiah said that the, the faithfulness of God is like manna which comes every morning. See, which comes every morning. You don't need to say, oh, I need uh, this uh, God's faithfulness today for tomorrow. No, 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 tomorrow new faithfulness, new strength, new power will come to you. That is what God told the, the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. He said, as long as no, you live, your strength will be. 
You see, as long as you live, God will give you new mercies. No, every morning. New strength every morning. New power every morning. To overcome temptation. See? To defeat the devil. To overcome temptation. Today, you no, know, you are very tired because of the problem, the difficulties. And you thought, that, oh, what about tomorrow? Whether I will be able to endure like today. Definitely you will. Because new mercies will come. It's waiting for you. It's waiting for me. That is what Jeremiah says. You know, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. See, great is God's faithfulness. Immeasurable. Cannot express. I feel you no know, God's mercies you know, every morning. Now, this day will come to an end. Today, you no, know, it will come to an end. And tomorrow, new mercies is waiting for you. you know, new strength, new power is waiting for you. And so, the Lord is my portion. That is what Jeremiah said. You no. Know? He did not say, money is my portion. He did not say, wealth is my portion. He did not say, reputation is my portion. He did not say, my parents are my portion. He said, the Lord. When you make God as your portion, no, as your inheritance, then you can say like Jeremiah that, therefore, I have a hope in him. See, Jeremiah said, since I make God as my portion, I have a hope. Because God never failed. He never failed. You see, just imagine the, uh, the trials, the persecution that Jeremiah went through. You know, ma days after days, weeks after week, months after months, years after year. You no, know, year after year. He went. But still then, he endured. Still then, you no. Know, Every morning he, he wake up smiling because he knew that God is going to give him vic victory like yesterday. He knew that God is going to give him power like yesterday. God is going to give him a strength like yesterday to overcome, to endure. And so Jeremiah said, I have a hope. I have a hope because he is my portion. The Lord is my portion. God is my portion. And therefore, I have a hope. See, I have a hope. Because he never fails. God never fails. They are new every morning. And then in verse 25, it says that the Lord is good to those who wait for him. Are you waiting for him? Am I waiting for him? If you wait on him, if he is your portion... Then the Lord is good to those who wait for Him. He's always good. See, God is always good. Sometimes, you no know, unfortunate things, unfortunate uh, problems, I mean, comes into your life. But God never think that God is not aware. God does not know what's going on in your life. He knew that. He knew that. And he will carry you through. No, he will carry you through. So let us you know, trust him. Let's make God as our portion. Because when you make him you know, your portion, your inheritance, then everything will come, you know, will you know, get in, in line. Everything will fall on line. Because God knows where to put where. No. He knows where to put you. He knows where to lead you. He knows where to send you. He knows where to keep you. And everything will fall on line. No, everything will fall on line. 
and you will say like Jeremiah that I have a hope. God's faithfulness are new every morning. See, God's faithfulness because he met a covenant. No, when you became his child, he made a covenant with you that I will lead you through. I will carry you through. I will give you the victory. I will provide. I will protect. I will secure. That's the promise that God made. Not only to the not only to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and then to Israelites, but he made this covenant to you and to me. The moment that we believe Jesus Christ is our personal Savior. And we can claim the promise. And God's mercies are new every morning. You don't need to, no, we don't need to keep extra manna for tomorrow because tomorrow new manna will fall from heaven. New strength will come. New protection will come. New power will come. New mercies, new faithfulness will come. As he allow us to see the new day, you know, to see the new sun. So may God bless each one of us. That as we go through you know, the sufferings, as we go through the sickness, as we go through the persecution, as we go through the trials, as we go through this you know, pandemic, let us make God our portion so that he will deliver us so that he will protect us, guide us, and lead us. God bless each one of us. Thank you.